So great to have you with me, Kian Tak Bear, who is the Assistant Managing Director of the Singapore Economic Development Board, overseeing EDB's New Ventures and EDB's Chief Digital Officer, and perfect to discuss Smart Singapore. Now, we do have a polling uh, question for you for this one as well, so I want to get that up on stage and you can have a look, as I mentioned, through the Pigeonhole app. And we are discussing how can Singapore become the world's smartest city. So you can either attract more multinationals to headquarters here in Singapore, become the global leader in 5G rollout, or prioritise security, stability and safety. So please do go to the uh, Pigeonhole website. The password is Bloomberg. And uh, have your vote while we're having this discussion. So, Kiantek, I wanted to start by talking about the fact that in 2014, we saw, of course, this initiative for Smart Singapore, three main pillars, with the government being digital to the core, creating a digital society, and a digital economy, hoping to attract smart city companies. Tell me how successful this has been over the past five years, and I guess what you're most proud of. You know, for, um, for well, first of all, thank you, and uh, good evening, everyone. For all of us who are technologists uh, in the room, we all know that the greatest fear that we have is to take technology and be so excited about it and after a while we forget what it's all about. And for us, for Singapore, being a smart nation is about applying technology to make a difference, to improve lives and livelihoods for our people. Now, this part about combining the use of technology and making a difference and, and, and making an impact on our people, that's super important. And so, uh, when I reflected back on our progress over the last five years, and I reflected back on, uh, for example, when we started, we said that we were going to roll out a number of critical digital infrastructure uh, as a foundation. And today, we are at a point where we're capable of taking advantage and applying this technology. So, let me, let me maybe give the room an example. We have uh, launched the Singapore National Digital Identity System. It is, uh, to, to many of us here in the room, we commonly know of it as SingPass, and we all have been uh, 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 accessing all sorts of digital services by government, for example, CPF or our HDB. Uh, applying, paying your tax. Pa paying your taxes, uh, applying for passports, uh, and you know, what used to be a track and a journey, a physical journey could now be done you know, with our phone in two clicks. And just think about it for a moment about the convenience and the time saved by all of us you know, to be able to allow us to, to, to undertake a transaction that used to take a long time and now in just two clicks. And in a society like Singapore where we are time staffed, this time is important. Uh, different, all of us will use this time safe in a different way, uh, but for sure, this idea of bringing convenience uh, and making a difference and solving real problems that's been the biggest achievement for us. Yeah, it gets back to Sanjay's point as well about, you know, fintech really leading the way in this sense. And I think I was telling you an anecdote as well about pay now. So coming from Australia, I mean, to be fair, I have been in Asia for nearly five years, so I'm sure Australia has caught up in that time. But I'm just fascinated by the ease of pay now. And my parents were here recently and I was trying to offload some tickets to a Canadian comedian who will remain unnamed because he was very, very late to his shows. And I knew that with my schedule, I wouldn't be to make the show and so I offloaded it on one of those Facebook expat groups immediately to somebody I didn't know and my mum was like how are you going to get paid and I said all I have to do is give my mobile number and that person will will give me the money immediately and and she was you know blown away as kind of am I I think that's one of the the very sort of you know positive things that has come through when we look I, I had the same experience because um, uh, about a week ago um, so my son's six years old and um, we had, we love, he loves skiing. He thinks he knows how to ski, but that's another story. But he, um, so we went skiing about a year and a half ago, and we, he wore uh, his ski boots once, and then that's it, he, grew, he outgrew them. So we put it on carousel, we sold it, and yeah, we had the same experience of, uh, of the buyer coming and then paying using pay now. And for me, this whole idea of, um, of, of an event, a transaction that used to take track to the post office and for many people in, in the world they still do that but today more than 90 percent of payment can be done from the comfort of all our home here in Singapore and in a way this whole idea of of using technology by government to make it easier and to solve real problems is important but actually for us in Singapore other than government being more efficient and more effective it is also about growth and it's also about companies 
companies finding ways in order to get onto the growth trajectory for them to do well. Because for Singapore, if our companies do well, they create jobs and they create exciting jobs here, I think we will do well. And in some sense, uh, some of the investment that we do in technology, uh, it's also for us mm. to make it easy for businesses to come on board the digital ramp yeah. using this technology that we've invested. Tell me about some of the new ventures that you're hoping to attract. And I know that there's been this rollout of the autonomous bus on Sentosa as well. And it was interesting, I read that perhaps the biggest hurdle that bus is facing is not so much about safety, but about getting the pigeons out of its way. Yeah, it's amazing, right? I mean, so this, for those of you who are not, who's not familiar, uh, last week, uh, Sentosa launched right now, uh, R-I-D-E-N-O-W. It's, it's an app that you can download. And essentially, it is a on-demand bus sharing service on Sentosa Island. The idea that they had was that um, in order for us to give the tourists a better um, visit experience, uh, we need to find a way for the visitors to be able to conveniently move from point to point on the island. And although Singapore is small, I mean, it's, it's still hot and it's still pretty far. Mm. So what they did was that they, they launched this service together with Singapore Technologies. Um, and I just tried it out yesterday. If you, you, you take the app, you just key uh, come now, and within, I think, five minutes, a bus will come. It's autonomous um, and it's on demand. And so, firstly, it solves a real problem of having us transport people uh, during, um, uh, in a convenient way because it's on demand. But secondly, in itself, it became a tourist attraction because this whole idea of autonomous is something that's still pretty new in the context of society. And we know that in order for technology to take off in any society, the one of the very important things we have to do is that people be comfortable with technology. And autonomous driving done in a safe way is one way for us to do that. And in a way, when we did the launch of that, it allowed us to create possibly a whole new mobility industry for us as a country. What about encouraging other companies or, or cities, for example, to adopt some of this technology? I think you told me you're also in uh, talks with Procter & Gamble. Yeah, so thanks for that. So um, I presume that you're an avid traveler. Yes. And that you, yeah, you love <laughs> to see the world. And for all of us, and many of you are as well, we all are so familiar with the idea of the four seasons. Mm. And the, I don't know about you, but my wife, she completely finds that when she's in the colder country, she loves it because her skin is uh, nice and dry. But when she's in Singapore, it's too humid, she sweats all the time. But I've got the other opposite. Right? I've got friends who, uh, who, when they're in the colder country, the skin breaks out and it's all dry. That's me, by the way. And, and so Procter & Gamble uh, knew of this, uh, this need uh, for the longest time, and they had a technology, but they just couldn't, for a longer time, they were just sitting there. And so what they did was that their lead scientists here, one of their lead scientists in Singapore turned entrepreneur, um, was able to take this technology, uh, it's a formulation technology, and to turn it and launch their product within a year in China. Uh, and they were able to turn it around. And for all of you who are technologists and who are product managers, uh, you know that that is pretty fast. You know, to go from an idea into a product and it's launched, and you could buy it. And the product is called Qi uh, for seasons. Um, and they, the fact that they could launch it in a year is testament to the fact that a company like Procter & Gamble was able to first have deep, important technology that's, in, that's advantageous for them. But they were able to deploy and take advantage of digital technology. This digital technology that they took advantage of basically allowed them to connect directly to consumer. So for all of us who are in the B2B business, we know how long the entire product development and sales cycle is. And Procter & Gamble, as your father was in Unilever, would know that too. But for them, you know, it's just a chance to be able to launch rapidly and use Singapore as a hub for them to create new products. That's, that's been, I think, the incredible journey of digitization and how the company has been able to find new products and growth and for Singapore. Can you ask them if they can make something that uh, stops TV makeup from breaking, breaking out as well? Because that's my major issue. Uh, let's talk about how Singapore as a smart city can be replicated. Do you think it's something that, you know, the, the model could be exported? You know, um, again, if I take a lesson from the tech world, you know, the one mantra that everyone keeps telling you is that with technology, we are now capable of being customer-centric all the time. Um, you know, just remembering that you are here to, to solve a problem for your customer. For us, uh, as a, a country, you know, we also follow the same mantra, 
And we believe that we must always have business-centric in our mind and citizen-centric. And the technology allows us to do that. So if there's a, you know, if there's a lesson um, that might be applicable to everyone, this whole idea of just being pro-business, business-centric and citizen-centric, that's super important. And if anyone can continue to do that, I think we'll be okay. Are there any specific companies or, I guess, industries that you'd really like to attract to Singapore to have their headquarters here? Mm. Well, you know, recently we've, we found that uh, the mobility space uh, has been um, um, on a tear. Uh, there are many major companies um, of all sorts, um, at, at Service Stack, who's come here. One of them, uh, and, you know, it's not always just about attracting them here because we have now spent 50 years of the EDB's life attracting all companies and setting up major operations here. The next phase of our growth, other than the new uh, young uh, scale-up companies, is also about helping this base of companies that we have here find new growth. So remember, I was just telling you that um, one of the companies that we have here is uh, Goldbell. Now, it is a, um, for all of you who is not so familiar with the company, it is a family-owned business, about 500 million, one of the largest uh, a distributor of heavy uh, leasing uh, buses and, and trucks, uh, one of the largest companies in Southeast Asia. And uh, the, the person running the company was a little bit worried because he wondered if what happened in the private transportation world could equally happen. In other words, the disruption there could equally happen in his world. And he wondered if Uber or Grab were to happen in, into his, in his world, where would his company be? And so he thought hard about that, and uh, now remember, this is a big company. So he set up a new uh, division and a new uh, uh, private limited company focusing on becoming the software inside of the grabs. Because he knew that in order for cities in the world to do well, you will need to have autonomous commute. You probably want to have some form of high capacity buses. Because if it's just going to be the grabs and the private transportation, we are going to be all gridlocked. And so he thought that that's going to be a macro growth story. And so he set up a company to allow him to set up a, a software inside as a service in order to grow with the mobility business. So this idea of a large company um, with deep advantages, but using technology and digital to allow them to find new growth is one that we are super excited about. I've just got a couple of questions before we break for dinner. And I was going to ask how the poll was going, but it looks like we might be having technical difficulties. But if you can um, try and vote on, on that pigeonhole AT, just very, very quickly, have you seen any impact of the trade war in terms of your business in Singapore? Yeah, well, firstly, um, the, uh, the tension between uh, um, the US and China is um, one that's causing significant uncertainty um, in the world today. And Singapore being a globally exposed uh, country, will certainly see some impact from this global uncertainty. So we are continuing to keep a watchful eye on what's happening in the world. Uh, but equally important, it reminds us of going back to fundamentals and for Singapore to pay attention to what's made us uh, uh, special in just being focused on the business and our citizens and just investing long term, uh, one of which, for example, is digital economy and smart nation. All right, we've got some uh, of the views coming through in the poll. 69% prioritise security, stability and safety in making Singapore become the world's smartest city. About 14% think uh, to become the global leader in 5G rollout. Oh, people are voting. This is exciting. And 17% attract more MNCs to headquarters in Singapore. So just one final question before we finish, Gantech. Where do you see Smart Singapore in, say, the next five to 10 years? We've talked exciting things like pay now, autonomous buses. Is there anything you know, out there that you've sort of got your eye on that we could see in the next decade? So for us, this idea of a smart nation and applying technology carries across all arms of the government. You know, what we just explained, what I've just explained to you is just but the surface. Uh, and that beneath that, if you peel back the, on the onion of the services that we have already launched, actually is deep digital to the core capability that we are developing in the government, which will allow us to, to uh, take this idea of a service journey to be able to walk the lives of our citizens, to see what are the moments that they are having, uh, or our companies and the moments that are having, and then de redesigning all our digital services to allow us to continue to make that impact on them. Kian Tech Bear, I learned a lot from that. Thank you so much. We're going to pause for dinner now and we'll be back with a couple more panels shortly. Thank you.